I started getting contacted by people I was networking with. And over time, they started offering their business if I would help them with their digital marketing. And light bulb went off and I was like, okay, this I should start this business. Welcome to the Lead In Podcast, where we dive deep into genuine stories of leaders who've seized control of their journey. This podcast is brought to you by Lead Hub, your growth partner for the trades. And now, let me kick it over to our guy, Austin Lenny. Guys, we got him. We got, I don't, have you, have you done an interview before? Have you done a podcast? I've done a podcast. Um, it is rare for me because I like to fly way under the radar. You know, I'm not, I'm not one of those uh, guys that's trying to get on every podcast. I only choose the best. So, no, this Love is my it. third, I believe my third podcast I've been on. So, happy to be here with you, Lenny Live. With Lenny so, Live. So, we got uh, Benjamin Hover here. Uh, uh, I, before we get started, because he would be he would be so upset if I didn't, uh, Mister uh, Red Hair by the Shorts, uh, Timothy Warlow. Thank you for the connection, buddy. We appreciate you uh, forever and always. Uh, but Mister Hubbard, uh, kind of give the guy give the crew a little background about uh, you know who you are, what you're about, and we'll kind of just kick it from there. Awesome. So. Yeah, my name's uh, Benjamin Hubbard. I am uh, 45 years old. I'm from originally from Gulfport, Mississippi. Um, joined the Air Force right out of high school, became a combat controller, uh, which is a very small career field in the Air Force. It's essentially air traffic control certified ground combatants. Um, that use all the same infiltration techniques that like special forces, Navy SEALs use. So we were jump qualified, combat dive qualified, halo demolitions. And we essentially work with NATO allies and our special forces uh, in a joint environment. So we'll work with, uh, you know, different units, and we are the air component. So anything air to ground, uh, that's kind of our wheelhouse. Um, so I did that for about 12 years um, and then decided to get out and started Champion AC, um, which was a residential air conditioning company. Uh, three years after I started that, uh, I was, you know, out there trying to find a good digital agency and, and just kept running into duds. So I felt like, wow, if they have businesses, I could do it better than them. So I started Lead Hub. And uh, about three years ago, I sold Champion, and now I'm full-time at Lead Hub. I'm also still working with veterans, trying to help um, a few different nonprofits like Coast to Coast Foundation, Combat Control Foundation. And uh, one of my passion projects that I'm working on is trying to connect veterans with new careers and, and their life after service. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And uh, I got I dabble in some other things. I, I'd say I'm a small-time investor and, uh, yeah, full-time student. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, when I went with you all to Idaho, and, and you know, the military as a whole is, is very large, like uh, Marines and Air Force. It's a large, you know, uh, groups of people. Yeah. Uh, and then you and then you have these guys over here. These <laughs> feels like its own like fraternity, really, because it's not a huge group of people, right? Uh, but I I found them to be so uh, multiversed in different disciplines. They were chameleons with human beings. They were they they could get along with different people. Like that time had to really shape kind of the foundation of, of, of what you care about, but also teach you a lot about yourself. Yeah, it did. So we, we use uh, culture index um, at, at lead hub and uh, Doug Kishin is, is someone who's taught me a lot about that over the years. And, and one of my strengths naturally is what's called behavioral flexibility. I can kind of walk into different rooms and, and do what I got to do to win and that was one of my strengths just naturally. And so I, I feel like that that was a part of me 
my combat control life where I, I was pretty good. I could do a lot of different things fairly well. Um, but I mean, I worked with guys that came in as Eagle Scouts and I mean, they were really military guys and they, I mean, these guys were unreal. I mean, some of my heroes are, are people that I, I worked with in the military and I learned so much from them because, you know, I'm, I'm a product of neglect, kind of a broken home, if you will. And, and I was, you know, when I was young, I sought out conflict. That's kind of what attracted me to the military. I wanted to go fight. And, and so when I got to meet some of my heroes in, in the service, I, I got to really learn from guys that were doing it for the right reasons. They were doing it to protect people. And they, they really taught me how to be a man in many ways and, and uh, taught me how to kind of calm down and not to seek conflict, uh, to learn from it, be ready for it. And, and really the good fighters rarely ever have to fight. And so um, it was it was quite an experience, but yeah, combat controllers it, it is kind of that chameleon. Like we can plug in with different teams and be effective and bring like a force multiplier effect, um, and that's that's kind of my mantra: is to be a multiplier in life and to do things to help others achieve their goals or, or come into a situation where maybe they're a little absent, some love and and tenacity, and bring that to the to the environment. I love it. So why, uh, when you got out, where did the idea of HVAC come on your radar and how did, how did you land on that? Oh man. Well, I, so when I started dealing with some politics and the, and there are cycles in the military, right? There, there are times where it's really good and everyone's happy and it's go, go, go. And then there, there's different leadership that will come in and, and kind of, you know, rain on your parade and, and and make it miserable. I mean, the one thing about the military is they can take something extremely fun and make it the most miserable experience you'll ever have. And uh, so when I knew it was time to get out, I'd always dreamed of being successful. I wanted to be a business person, an entrepreneur. It was always in my mind. And, and I think it, I knew that was going to be a part of my story in my life. And so I was interested in the solar industry and uh, met a guy at a poker tournament. Uh, we ended up starting Champion AC together, actually. And so, um, yeah, I, I it kind of happened over a poker tournament at Doug Isaac's house, one of my pararescue para buddies. So uh, how much did you know about HVAC when you started? I knew that I was miserable when it wouldn't kick on in the summer. I'm a creature for comfort. I knew nothing about it. I'm probably the least mechanically inclined person in the HVAC world. Um, I, I can communicate it. I can sell it. I, mm -hmm. can, I can see it. I can negotiate it. I understand the business very well. But I knew very little about it other than when I put my mind to something, I'm just going to figure it out and win. So I'm going to do an HVAC company from a poker tournament. Um, I, I like when the AC blows. That's, that's a big. So how did we get from that to the first customer? Did you hire an HVAC tech? How, how did we, how did we do that? Yeah, no, I mean, we, we, so, and, and, don't get me wrong. I knew a little bit more than I'm letting on. I mean, I went to school and I had learned, you know, the San Antonio market was one of the best HVAC markets in the country. And so I, I felt that an incredible uh, place for the HVAC industry. Um, I, I felt the odds were with me from the standpoint um I looked at the landscape and and cuz I was studying solar I was looking at HVAC and I saw all of these companies piling into the phone book and then when I would do a Google search and, and mind you this was 07 no one was really there so I kind of saw an opportunity where hey I, I can maybe find my spot and so getting that first customer um and and the first employees we just I'm a, I'm a recruiter also like by heart, like I, I, as an instructor, as a combat controller, I was out there recruiting uh, new combat controllers. And that's a much harder thing to find than finding an HVAC technician. 
You know, you, you get to the point where you can find combat controllers out there in the wild and you'll find, you know, not just millions, but hundreds of millions of dollars thrown at you because they're probably the hardest people to find uh, in the world, possibly. Um, but we we just started finding HVAC techs. You know, we put it out there, put it out to the universe, and, and they started showing up on our doorstep. And we literally started it from my home near UTSA a uh, little three bedroom house that that was where it started in a one car garage I love it and so i found that most things out of life especially when you find success in one type of business uh there's a joke out there uh when you when your company gets big if you want to find out where you spend the most money just start a business in there so like look at your p&l and like Hey, I'm just going to spend money there and, and create my own vertical. Uh, the need for, you know, marketing and leads, right? Especially in today's, as we sit today, it's probably the razor's edge of everybody's business is what is, you know, leads. There's so much noise. But back in the day, I mean, you were really at the forefront of uh, branding, marketing, and everything. And was lead was Lead Hub built out of a necessity because people were just doing a bad job? <laughs> So what happened was I, I, one, I was an insomniac. Um, I, I was up all night. I was working at this, trying to figure out how to crack the code on the digital side of, of the business. And as I started getting traction and we started ranking, um, I started getting contacted by people I was networking with. and. Over time, they started offering their business if I would help them with their digital marketing. And light bulb went off, and I was like, okay, this I should start this business and do it because I, I see how many people are doing it poorly and ripping people off. At that time, most digital marketing companies were buying the – their client's domain name and holding them hostage for it. So you would have a, a, a marketing company that would, you know, mind you, this is when websites were just really starting to launch. I mean, some of our biggest competitors didn't have websites at the time we, we launched champion. And so there, there would be companies that would buy the domain and host it and GoDaddy and then lease them their own name. And so that was kind of common practice. And so I was adamant about doing business the right way. And so I wanted them to own their own data, own their own marketing. And, and if we were good stewards of their business, they would retain us and keep us and word would get out. And, you know, there were a lot of people who came in and made a lot more money and they were in those echo chambers doing a lot of talking, you know, and, and uh, we've withstood the test of time. And now Lead Hub's got you know, about 150 clients around the country, um, award-winning digital marketing company, won a pretty awesome award with Yelp. Um, and, and we've got very happy clients that we've delivered for, for 13 plus years. Um, we've helped not only the owners do well, but we've helped create jobs. Um, we, we've helped communities by being a good steward of our clients, marketing dollars and their resources. And, and we believe those relationships are important. It's not always about money. I think a lot of people get wrapped up in, in trying to make money too quick and not doing the right thing. But if you do the right thing and you have a plan and you solve a, a big, important problem, oftentimes you'll make a lot of money. And when it comes to marketing, even as we sit today, like what is the like business owners, right? Or like somebody that's running a company, what's the biggest thing? they get wrong when it comes to marketing lead flow? So, you know, I see a lot of different mistakes. Uh, so just saying the what they get wrong mm -hmm. is tough because I see a variety of different mistakes. And then I see people who are doing it right. And I'll tell you what I, I think is the right way to do it is to have a brand strategy. Um, have you ever watched a commercial and you know they spent millions of dollars on it and it's some beer commercial or insurance and then as soon as it's over, you don't remember what company it was? I think that's a big problem. I think people over-communicate on their, even their shrink wraps on their vehicles. 
they and you, and it drives by and you're like what was that i just saw a bunch of verbiage I, I can't even tell you who that what company that was same thing on on commercials or radio they're trying to fit in too much information and then there are companies that really get the branding down right now that's not always the that oftentimes that's the expensive route right because you have to feed that machine and you have to commit to doing it but when you own mindshare when people recall you unaided recall they don't need to look up anyone cuz they know you they remember your name that's where you win big and i think that you can most people what i see is everyone now is competing bottom of the funnel right they're all trying to do adwords at the same time and and then that that drives up it's like an auction that drives up the price so the people living at the top of the funnel are crushing them every day and twice on sundays so i think uh being more balanced is is important if if someone's really looking to grow their business um get the branding down make sure that your your brand strategy your core purpose your logo the way you look the way that your company talks about it in networking opportunities is is consistent mm -hmm. and when your um I think that the bigger issue, and, and I'm just as guilty as everybody else, is because of technology and because of what's out there and the, and the connectivity of Netflix and everything, is that I feel a lot of my stress uh, is predicated on you know false timelines. Everything needs to be done tomorrow, right? And when I started the podcast, my own podcast, Mark said, look, I have one rule, and it's really simple. We put out episodes. That's it. He said, we just do that for the next 10 years and we'll see where life takes you. Like, I think a lot of companies, when they go to for somebody like you or they're hiring somebody like you, they're just living in this short term, like fantasy land where like branding and marketing per se really takes a good couple of years to really seep into uh, a community, into overall, just kind of keep uh, top of mind per se. Yeah, I mean, expectation setting, we talk about that a lot at, at Lead Hub. Um, there are people that have been burned, right? They've, they've spent a lot of money with digital companies, and oftentimes these companies are promising them results overnight, and, they, and they're not really using the best practices, just like these service companies and home improvement companies want to use best practices in sales or presentation, install the way they operate, even the way you drive, the way you park, wearing shoe covers, best practices, same thing. And in, in, on the marketing side, you want to set proper expectations, right? You don't want to overpromise and tell someone they're going to be receiving something that's fantasy land, right? And that's what a lot of companies will do. And because they're trying to sell, they're trying to get that lead. They want to close that business and then figure it out and build the plane while it's flying. Um, it, it lead hub. I mean, we've, we've been doing it for 13 coming up on 14 years. So mm -hmm. it's not like we're building the plane while it's flying now. I mean, we, I'd be lying if I said we, we haven't done that in the past, but you know, you had thrown out the time, like a two year timeline and that's not always the case. I mean, we've seen in some sub markets, right. Where it's not quite as competitive as let's say a San Antonio or a Dallas or a LA or wherever. Um, you can start to make an impact in a short amount of time and you can even rank for your paycheck keywords, your top keywords in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so, and then there are also a lot of companies out there that are doing a lot of things. Okay. Maybe they're not branding well, maybe they're missing one piece of the puzzle. And so we've seen in some cases where, where clients or a new customer is getting results in the first month, two months. Mm -hmm. And then there are times where we see it, it's an uphill battle. I mean, because mm -hmm. they're, they're like a few months behind. They're, they're coming at us and, and everything they're investing into their marketing, they need it to work and they need it at 10 times, you know, whatever dollar they're putting in, they need $10 out, right? And that's mm -hmm. very difficult to guarantee. You can't always guarantee that. That does take time and you've got to employ the right, the best practices, the good strategies that in fact don't always work. You know, sometimes if let's say 
we're doing a good job and that phone's ringing and, and they're struggling during the shoulder season. All of a sudden the summer kicks in and they, they don't have the call center to staff or they're not really listening to the calls and they're not implementing best practices. You know, that that's, we've got to work together. And so at lead hub, what we feel that we do better than, than most and probably one of the best in the country at is marrying marketing and operations. We really understand their operation. That's what gives us the edge. We understand what it is to run an air conditioning or a plumbing or electrical company. That's what, how we were born, right? So we love that side. We want to understand their pain points. We want to know where they're strong, where they're weak. And then we'll go in and craft a plan that will help strengthen some of their weaknesses. And while also adding firepower to their strengths. And, and really giving them the insights and, and even automation, uh, letting them listen to the calls when they miss a call or they there's a call, an opportunity for training. We try to make sure it gets in front of that owner or that marketing director because it's not always about getting it. It's about oftentimes getting it in a timely fashion to where they can plug that gap. Now that in a day they make an adjustment, now all of a sudden their call center is back on point. They're not only booking the calls, their booking rate's good, they're closing the jobs and getting reviews. It's a team effort. It's not always on the, the marketing company and it's not always on the 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 operation, right? The the home improvement, home service, or whatever company. It's working together with your marketing company. And I will say too, there are really good marketing companies out there that, that do a great job with branding, um, build good websites and and can you know, do good buy campaigns. And and so I, I think it's important to note there are some good ones out there. I just, I think Lead Hub is one of the best because we really do care about the people. Uh, we care about the relationships. Um, we, our responsiveness is second to none. And so I think that's oftentimes what it takes to to really be effective and to win for your clients. If you're a home service company out there and let's say you're starting out or you're growing, like what size does a company need to engage a marketing company in? And is there kind of a sweet spot or you've seen or, or, or do people come to you afterwards? Like where's the sweet spot? I mean, we've worked with startups. So there, there is a, a company called Junkstart that mm-hmm. started with zero. He came to us with an idea and he wanted us to come up with a name. And and this guy is going places. He has had a great mm-hmm. first year, very successful. Uh, he's got a beautiful brand. The, I see the, the trucks in San Antonio and I'm blown away. It's such a young man with such a strong goal and great work ethic and executing his vision. Um, and we're working hand in hand with him. And so that was a startup with with a really good idea and a couple of hundred grand. And we're rocking and rolling lockstep. All right. And I've seen companies that are on the, on the flip side of that. I've seen guys doing about a million and they they can't continue to spend the money on marketing because they might not have a consistent call center presence or they might have turnover in their tech department or their sales opportunities aren't converting and and uh or often there are times where will be it'll be a very competitive market and they want to compete with some of these bigger organizations that are outspending them and outbranding them and and can afford to lose on a few leads to try to get them all where they really can't so i, I don't think there's a magic number to your question as far as what size a company needs to be at. But I would say from a track record standpoint, um, it, when a company is ready to start growing and they're in the one above $1 million in annual revenue and they're ready to grow by, let's say, 25 plus percent, I think that's when you want to really explore hiring a, a digital marketing company or just a marketing company or even going directly to you know, a traditional uh, company that can help you with some TV or radio. Um, You know, I'm obviously believe having your 24 hour a day salesperson, which is your website, be one of your backbones of your marketing presence. 
I also think with if you have the right brand strategy, you want to throw everything in the kitchen sink at it. Mm, I love it. One of the things that I think that you're really good at personally is I think you're a procurer of talented people. I think that you're a good reader of people, but you're also uh, very patient with them. Like what I love to do is see them before they're them, before they even know they're them. Um, Maybe they didn't know how good they could be. Um, Is that something that you've always had in you or is that something that you've uh, refined over the years? Yeah, I think that's one of those instinctual things that I've got like a sixth sense sometimes with like the whole cat like reflexes. Um, I, I think I've I've been wrong many times, so it's been refined. Um, but I've also been doubted and counted out and treated like I was a nobody. And I remember how it made me feel. And so when I see not only someone with a lot of potential, but let's use Aaron for an example. Um, well, Aaron and I do butt heads, right? We're very different. Um, we, we have um, a very different chart in culture index. Uh, we really do go together like peanut butter and jelly when it comes to running a company. Um, it's not always easy because – He's very conscientious and a quick start of one. And I'm very growth minded and I've, I'm always trying to go a hundred miles an hour. I mean, my wife jokes and calls me all gas, no brakes. You know, I'm on the go. I got to go. I'm ready. I want to take over. And so I will say that I've, I do have a good track record of finding someone before they see it in themselves and then helping them identify the right position to, to be in within the organization and studying what they don't want to do and what they really want to do and are good at. And then helping create an environment where they're doing almost a hundred percent of what they're good at and then finding other people to do the task that, that, drive them crazy or that suck the energy out of the room. And so that's because there's someone else right around the corner that wants to do those tasks. That's looking for a job that they find mundane. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so that's, I think my, my strength is that there were, there were certain tasks and certain things within my career field as a combat controller that I didn't love. Right. And, And when we did them, the night before I was thinking about it, like, Oh, I don't want to go do this airfield or I don't want to go do this, you know, whatever. Like we, we used to have to do these, uh, what's it called? MMLS or these like airfield setups. And I wanted to go do, you know, I wanted to go jump. I wanted to go blow stuff up. I wanted to go do, you know, the fun side of the job. And so it's, it's just important. Like I wouldn't be a good call center rep. Right. But I can mm-hmm. find that person that that's what they want to do, mm-hmm. train them and lift them up and, and then find the things they don't want to do and maybe find a coordinator that will help them with those tasks that they want off their plate. And then everyone's at 100 percent happy and feels good about the environment. And then culture really soars when when you've got people doing and dialed in, doing what they love, and what they're really good at. It, there's more opportunities to win. And when you've got more opportunities to win and you've got like-minded team and management team around you, we're putting together ideas to make life better for everyone. And that's really my why. I mean, I could retire today and do nothing and sit around and watch Netflix, but I want to change people's lives. You know, I want to help people find their potential. Um, and, And that's what, kind of gets me up in the morning and gets me fired up about this life and this opportunity. God has blessed me tremendously and I want to honor it. And so I want to find more of these talented people. And I mean, and there are so many other great companies out there. And and this kind of brings me to one of my other missions in life, which is to connect veterans with 
new opportunities in their the next phase of their life. I mean, many of these guys have done 10 plus deployments and have been fighting war, you know, and that's that's what they know and what they do. And they're more scared now getting out to come try to find a what's next than they were going to fight in combat. And so I think there's a lot of really good people out there that, that really care about this. Actually, um, even Apex, the the Apex Southern Air, the company that bought Champion, um, they have a recruiter. Uh, I was talking to Lee Weeks the other day. He connected me with their recruiter, and I want to find more and, and help connect veterans to the trades or any job and find, you know, be that conduit. And so... Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of went on a tangent there, but I, it's it's important to help people reach their potential. And and I've had just enough people that have lifted me up when I was on my back and stuck their hand out and been there for me when I needed them, even if it was just a nudge. And and if we can do that, man, we're gonna we're gonna do good things. Uh, I don't think anything's random. Um, I don't think that the guy that I interviewed before this was ex-military owns an HVAC company, used to work at Lockheed Martin and grew WeWork, the entire South. He did a tweet uh, as a joke uh, about military guys need more jobs. And he got 52 responses in, in eight hours, started a company called Smooth Operators. Uh, he placed five military guys already in operation roles. His goal is to do 50 this year. I want to have a meeting with you, him, and Kyle Stambro. And I told him, I'll coach all the people that are dealing with addiction or whatever. But we're going to do this. We're going to work because this is what is this is what it's about. And he's so pumped to meet you. He's so pumped to meet you. And I told him about you. And I'm just I'm just so excited. Awesome. Yeah, I had a call um, Monday, actually, with Kyle was on the call, uh, Mike LaMonica from the Combat Control Foundation, Mark Tirez from the Honor Foundation. And uh, we, we've we been putting our heads together and, and trying to uh, simplify the process because it is a bit, you know, finding out when someone's getting out, how they're getting the training, strength finders, taking that personality test because not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, right? Not everybody wants to be a salesperson. Um, and, and so not only put placing them in, in jobs, but really jobs that complement their strengths and, and benefit not only themselves, their family and their community. And so, you know, I think that's a, uh, a wonderful thing we can do for our service men and women who've been out there putting it on the line for us to run these companies. And, and I'll tell you, when I started Champion, I didn't know what I was going to turn it into. I had a dream and believed in myself and knew that I would do something big one day. But I, I had no idea the how big you can get. And now that I've seen it and I've seen some of these companies explode and grow, you know, it's good to go through it because if I can do it, the there are guys that are 10,000 times better than me getting out today. There are better combat controllers than me. They were better shooters, better jumpers better air traffic controllers, better at every aspect of that job. I was junior varsity compared to many of these guys. And these guys can come in and take over the industry. And so, and that's kind of what I would like to see is just, you know, a nice pathway and a, and a nice streamlined process for them to get rewarded for their service to this country with fantastic jobs and opportunities spread throughout serving this country. And who, I mean, think about homeowners, right? They're the winners. Homeowners are the winners. When you're getting veterans in to come in, a respectable, someone who has served this country, they're going to win. So that's, it's important. It's an important mission. And I'd love to meet your friend. Would you say his name was? Nathan. He lives Nathan. in Dallas. Yeah, he's a great dude. Uh, yeah. he, he went, he said, he said, he said that, uh, he went from two people in his division at WeWork to hiring 1200 in, uh, 13 months. And he said, I think if I can hire all those crazies, I can get some military guys, some, some jobs, you know? So, uh, that's, what's so exciting to me about entrepreneurship, 
right? It, it provides these opportunities for so many people. Um, not everybody needs to be an owner. Not everybody needs to be uh, a sales guy, a technician, but there's so many jobs within uh, AP, C, customer service, that, that these people are qualified for, looking for a great place to live and looking to restart their life after um, sacrificing for us. Uh, and it's just so important. And um, as I get farther and farther down the road of entrepreneurship and, and business ownership, um, it's so not about me. Um, that it's ridiculous. Uh, when I started, I thought it was, that's why that I need this thing and that thing. And I realized I really don't need a lot. So watching my former Marine sales manager get molded in to become a number two and push him farther than he's ever thought like that. That's so cool. Chris Hoffman, ex-Marine, running an amazing company, hiring veterans as well. There's so many opportunities. So we're going to continue um, to look at that and push down and, and do that. So if people want to find out about Lead Hub, all these things that you've talked about, where's, where do you send them? Yeah, so you can give us a follow on social media. Um, we're on Facebook, uh, Lead Hub, and uh, our website is leadhub.net. Uh, there is a squatter holding leadhub.com, so it's leadhub.net. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, my email is ben at leadhub.net. Uh, you can reach out to me directly, um, and uh, it's always good to see you, my friend. Yes, sir. Guys, um, and and I've said this almost every podcast I've got off of on this uh, podcast, um, the responsibility to share uh, what Ben shared today, uh, what, what Dennis shared today, uh, the people that I've interviewed so far, uh, the company that sits there, Lead Hub. Um, I don't do it haphazardly. Uh, I put my heart and soul, my energy into it. Uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's a lot of work for me and Mark. But like Mark and I stated when he came on the podcast, uh, we wouldn't rather, we want to do it with any other people. Uh, we're so happy every time we get off a phone call. So I'm going to show up every week. I'm going to keep bringing these stories. I'm going to bring my network. I'm going to bring my energy. Uh, because this is what we need to talk about. We need to talk about uh, how we can lift up our neighbor. We need to talk about how we can lift up our community. Uh, and we're going to do it one person at a time. And I'm going to do it one podcast at a time. Um, for whatever reason, the good Lord gave me a voice to talk a lot. So I'm just going to keep on doing that. I love it, man. Appreciate your time, my brother. Guys, send this to somebody that'll get some value. Check out leadhub.net. And we'll see you next time. Folks, if you made it to the end of the episode, I'm sure you found some value with what you're listening to. If you could send this to a friend, rate us and review us, share us around. The more that you share us, the more that we can share content with you. Thank you all so much for your time and listening. And we'll see you next time.